you agree that shop furniture is the most fun furniture to make? I mean, it's fine to build things for your home, uh, but there's nothing quite like building something to organize all your tools and your things and giving them a home. I was just thinking about what makes the perfect shop furniture. I wrote a list. Practical, duh. Smartly designed, like so nifty solutions, it's kind of cool. Utilizing scrap materials whenever possible. No pointy knobs or handle. I hate when things are sticking out, get stuck in your clothes, the worst. Specific spaces for specific tools. Things should have a home, right? No stuff hanging on outside of like a moving cart or anything. I have done that in the past. You're utilizing the space really efficiently, but the minute you start moving it, ah, things fall off. It's so frustrating, I don't like that. Casters. Right? If casters add a handlebar. Drawers. I know this is kind of a point of division. I really like drawers, keep things dust free. And finally, nice but not too precious. You should build it so it functions really well for you, but the, when it stops working out because our shops evolve and everything, you should not be too afraid of taking it apart and build something else, right? I mean, I kind of think that's a good philosophy for making stuff in general. But let's see if we can take all of these pointers and build a really good piece of shop furniture, right? Well, first of all, the what and where, and it's it's over there. Let's go there. Screwdrivers. Oh, some of you may remember, I mentioned how we're doing our own screwdrivers, London style handles, uh, different kinds of hardwood, Phillips, and both flat-headed screwdrivers. You can get them in a set, or you can get just one. They're so beautiful. Anyway, we're cutting them out right now. This is where the magic happens, right? When you're operating the CNC machine, you spend a lot of time right here, changing bits, going for the compressor, doing the dust collection, changing the bits again. Uh, so this area gets used quite a bit. However, I mean, look at it, it's a mess. So my goal is to build something that's going to tidy up this area, uh, make it more efficient, make it cleaner, uh, organize all of these bits, yeah, make this a nicer space to be. One of the things that I would like to incorporate into this card is this hose reel. It would be nice if it was in the inside so that you don't accidentally uh, bump into it. And then the compressor is going to be on the inside as well and then there's going to be drawers. One of the things that I want to uh, integrate into these drawers is storage for this torque wrench set and storage for general CNC bits. Okay, so here is, here is my basic drawing of this piece of furniture. We have four sides, we have a shelf, uh, we have a divider. And it kind of got me thinking like, what parts are really necessary? This piece right here is kind of annoying. Like, I mean, I need this divider to have support because of the drawer slides. But then it's like, hmm, maybe I can, I don't know, cut some sections out of there. Maybe I don't need that whole piece. I need this side, this side, I need that, I need that. Um, I don't necessarily need these areas. I could maybe use that material for drawers. I don't know. I feel like I'm kind of going at, like, a little wild here. So another goal here is to design pieces that click together. And that's one reason why the CNC machine is really cool. Perhaps we should take a moment now and see this baby in action and cut up all of our pieces. So this is the basic vectric file, right? And we have these kind of crenellations, I like to call them, with these kind of oversized box joints that connect the pieces together. In terms of the sheets here, I'm using two half sheets um, and one quarter inch sheets. And the quarter inch is for the bottom of the drawers. Okay, now we're done. Uh, you can go home, show's over. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> we're just getting started here, right? Okay, so here is the main structure, uh, dry fitted. Always a good idea to dry fit, so make sure that your design actually is working, that there's no issues or anything. There's a hole cut here, there's a hole cut here, there's a hole cut here, and there's a hole cut there. It's like every time I do drawer slides, I have to kind of re-familiarize myself again, like which part goes where? And how did it best connect? I'm making a separate video all about drawer slides and how to think about them, how to go about doing them, and that's gonna be out in a little bit. So stay tuned for that. So let's see here. The drawer. This is the way it is. 
I've been designing uh, quite a lot of plants now and pieces of furniture uh, using V-Carve. And over time, they've kind of gotten a little bit more elaborate, whereas now, like the whole idea of designing pieces where the, the parts click together. I would say something like this takes maybe a couple of hours to design. Uh, but then what's nice about that is once that's designed, it's done. So I'm gonna have a plan available for this. And there's that PDF file available as well. So you could either cut this on the CNC or you can print out the PDF file and then glue it on a sheet of plywood and then mark it out and cut the, uh, the sections out where the band saw, or, you know, on your table saw or the jigsaw, that kind of thing. Now I'm using half inch Baltic birch plywood for this. And I really like Baltic birch because it is so strong. Now, if I was using regular uh, plywood, I would probably use a three quarter inch because it's not as strong. So I would wanna use a thicker material. Um, although if I was using three quarter inch, I would have to redesign some parts uh, because this is designed for these half inch pieces to fit into. So this is the front of the drawer. So you can see the difference from the back. There's a little bit of an overhang here uh, because there's drawer slides. So they're going to be visible on the side. So that that's why there's an overhang here. Uh, like if you just did it like this is the back piece that looks like regular box joints. And this is kind of like box joints, but with an additional uh, cap piece here. So this video is sponsored by Taiwan Excellence uh, that have won the Taiwan Excellency Award. Um, and they offer a variety of different products, such as this Bee Tiger and Little Bits for the CNC and the Sloki Torque Wrench Set. So this bit uh, is the one that I used to cut the uh, plywood for the cart. And this is one of their more general used bits uh, that you can use on a variety of materials. You can cut wood, plastic, copper, aluminum, steel with this one, according to their instructions. The other product that they offer is this Sloki Torque Screwdriver Kit. So you have different handles here, um, and then you have these various torque settings. So of course the torque setting is going to be different on different applications. So basically what you do is you pick out what is the bit that I need, what's the torque setting that I need for that application, uh, put them together and pick a handle. We have 0.6 Newton meters. The highest one is 5.5 Newton meters. And once it starts clicking, that's as tight as that setting will allow. Some of these are really easy to over torque and break. So if you're using a system like this, uh, you are avoiding that possibility. Which is really nice because I have broken a couple of rather important bolts uh, <laughs> that I wish I hadn't. And this would have been much more useful. So thanks so much to Taiwan Excellence for uh, sponsoring this video and supporting this channel. All links are in the description below. But now let's get back to our project. So what I'm doing here now is attaching the holder for the hose reel. Like that's one of the main things that I want this car to hold. So pretty good spot for this. You can move it. Once you have organized something, it's a lot easier to keep it organized because you don't want to mess it up. You should just know how many bits I've broken. So you go through a lot of bits, many more bits than I would have thought before uh, getting into the CNC work. Finding a way to organize all of these things. But... Now, one thing that I'm thinking about this card here is that it'd be nice to have a handle on the side, maybe even both sides, I don't know. If I were to design with a hole in it, this is where the rod would go. If I cut like three of these of Baltic bird and sandwich them together,
So I got this nice piece of red oak. I'm not gonna really use it for anything else because it's utility, but it's really dense. It's perfect for a handle. I'm gonna cut it down to an inch and a half square uh, and then put it on the rotary and, and, and make it round. <laughs> Okay guys, shop cart uh, is complete. I think it turned out really good. It is simple, it's practical. This plan uh, is available um, in the link below if you are interested. Um, first I was gonna use quarter inch for the back, but then I actually ended up having enough to use the half inch. And since it just provides more strength, I decided to, to go for that instead. Just love this part though. I think I hit most points on my list, right? The one thing I didn't hit was to utilize scrap material because I ended up using, you know, new sheets of plywood. So there you go. Drawer slides is actually a luxury. I usually don't use drawer slides, but God, you can't beat how nice they move in and out. So here, I got a little organizer. This is MDF. I love using both the first plywood. If I have that option, I always go for that just because it is so much stronger and it just looks really neat. I really turned from uh, previously like wanting to paint plywood and now I, I don't want to paint plywood at all. I just love the look of plywood. Um, and of course in the shop, I don't think it really needs to be painted anyway. Thanks for watching guys and uh, I think that's about it. I'll see you soon.